better guys. Um, today we're going to have a look at compressing biogas. Um, I'm going to start off in reverse because I've already compressed some biogas into a tank. It's just so I know it works. I'm not going to show you things that I, I know are not going to work. So it works and I'll show you what we're going to do. So when we converted our barbecue to biogas, we just installed this barb fitting. So I need to replace that back to the original. So I can just take that off my hands. Back to that fitting. Now, this is a hose here, and I'll show you. It's uh, hooked to our, our uh, gas bottle there. So, I will go ahead and just reattach. That should be good enough. And um, open the valve. So, the, here, make sure that's off. So the uh, regulator's back on it. Um, just a spare one. I don't think it was the original one because it was a bayonet fitting and I've actually just gone for BSP fittings instead of bayonet. All right, so let's start her up. Not that you'd be able to see much. G'day, Comfy. Um, yeah, I'll uh, get it started. So you can hear the gas coming out. That's positive. That's lit. Um, you can see the heat ripples there, you won't, obviously won't be able to see the flame. Excuse the dirt inside the barbecue, I do use it, so it does get dirty every now and then. Um, so I will boil this so I can have my morning coffee, and then we'll actually go into the shed and uh, compress some from the air mattress into the tank once I've used some of this. Thank you, Doug. We're in the shed. Um, we've got the air compressor set up. So basically this is an old air compressor, it's a bit rubbish, everything's like a bit broken, it's old. It's been sitting in my father-in-law's shed for ages so we actually just used just the compressor bit at the top without hooking anything up to the the existing tank here so we've just got some bsp adapters here this is an old barbecue cord anyway um, some bsp adapters again i've got a block here manifold block that has a gauge so i can tell what psi that i'm filling up to um like you can actually buy gas uh, tank fillers like proper ones but like 120 bucks or something and uh, they don't have uh, the gauge which is what I actually want to see to, to what pressure I can get this this bottle filled up um, so I've just got fitting the hardest part was getting this pole fitting here the POL to BSP right hand thread you can get them to left hand thread easy enough but I got the the right hand thread adapter at uh, BCF, Bone and Camping Fishing. Um, so I think that was $12. These are just old fittings that I've had laying around from the kit for the air compressor. Uh, this is about $30 with the, the gauge on it. And then you yeah, that there and that adapter there, these two here. So I'll just make sure everything's working. I've got the uh, air air mattress hooked up there the valve just got a garden hose going into a barb fitting that was easy enough because the uh yeah it was exact size already um so i've already filled a little bit i'll just open this so you can see i've got it you know if it doesn't focus properly but it's at about 30 psi already so i'll get that cranking and um We'll see how much we can fill it. So, like I said, I think that's about 600 litres, about 670-ish, ish. I don't know exactly, but that's what my base, basic mathematics is saying. Um, all right, I'll just on and off. So, I'll just turn this on. open.
I'll just cut that there for a minute. And obviously I haven't got enough thread tape going on here so the it's leaking a little bit out. Now that is incredibly hot now. So I might stop this, give it a rest, and uh, see how much I can fill this again. Now I'll just turn this valve off. Then, um, I'll just open it again. You can see it's about 70 psi. And we've still got a fair whack of um, gas left in here. So I'll let it cool down and I'll check back in. All right, I've given it another go. Um, it seems that like 120 psi is about the uh, the max this wants to put into the tank. You see, it's still got a bit left. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd probably call that uh, like 100 liters left. So if this tank holds 500 liters, that's through the barbecue. That should be in theory, um, you know, maybe 40 minutes, 50 minutes of uh, cooking. Um, I'll open the valve. That's just the air going back into the air compressor, so tighten that. 120 psi. Uh, the next step would be to see how long that lasts in the barbecue, just to confirm. But, you know, so there's still quite a bit left in that air mattress. But, I'll give it a whirl. And I'll go back to you. We are back. Food for them. So, I'll put the regulator back on. And uh, fittings. Okay, we can see. So this is about 110 psi by the time I finished stuffing around with it and just double testing it worked. Um, so I've just got on the, the smallest setting, the lowest it'll go on. Um, just I'm just going to see how long it'll last uh, through pressurising. Instead of using the um, pump down there, which might push out more than what's needed. Um, so yeah, we'll see how long all this lasts. We are half an hour in, and it's still going, still going strong. Um, I think it might last a bit longer than the air mattress because uh, like, that pump is 38 litres per minute, and I'm actually using the regulator that's intended for the bar, like for natural gas. So, of course, that flame on low is going to be smaller than what it is going to be with using the pump. So this, in theory, should last longer. Say like if I had a little three-way fridge that only needed a tiny flame, this gas bottle could last a while. No, I haven't tried it, of course, but that's in theory. Um, and I'll just go through while I've got this going. The fittings here, so that's the POL fitting with the right hand thread that I got. And I've just used these fittings here. They're just nifty, easy access. So when I want to fill, I'll put that in and then use that bottom. Just unclip that. Just like take this whole assembly off, unclip it, put that on, and then clip that back in. And then I just hook that bit to the uh, air compressor. So that'll be nice and easy configuration for me at least anyway. Um, one thing I've noticed sitting here watching it because I'm diligent of uh, what I'm doing and I'm actually watching it and I know if that stops whistling, the flame's going out because I'm not actually eye level with it. Um, that there is a little bit of a smell coming from in here. So I'm gonna have to use Loctite to uh, just make sure everything's sealed properly. Uh, that's the other thing I've uh, picked up with this bit of research is that the gas that comes out of the digester if it smells then you've still got hydrogen sulfide in there and 
you don't want the hydrogen sulfide getting in the tank because it's corrosive. Um, but this is only short term. This has only just been put in today and emptied today, so it shouldn't do any damage. Like uh, I don't know the the rate of corrosion, um, which I'll I'll do some research and see how that goes. But to combat that, I've added um, what's it bleach, um, sodium hydroxide to the uh, to the scrubber. So when it when the gas bubbles through, it'll react with the sodium hydroxide to scrub out the extra hydrogen sulfide. And I did that before I did this, and uh, it does make a difference. The smell, like the odor from the gas, has lessened. Uh, I'm guessing the way to tell whether you need to replace it is if it goes from alkaline to acidic, you need to put either more bleach in or just replace the, uh, the liquid that, that's in there. So this is the day after. Um, at night it got too hard to record, too grainy and you couldn't see anything. Uh, so from the gas tank got a few minutes under one hour and um, so a bit less than I thought but I blame that to I think the air leaks. Uh, I need to get some Loctite onto it. Um, I'm going to give it another try. I've got air mattresses full again so I'll bring the compressor down out of the shed and uh, try and do it again. So I'll get back to you then. I've got it set up again. This little shed outside the greenhouse. I think I'll just keep the air compressor in there instead of dragging the air mattresses down to the shed. Uh, a bit of a hike. So, got that. There you go. Another one there that's full. A big um, thousand litres full. So I need to do something with it. I'm going to cook again tonight with it. And I'll compress this. See how I go. My goodness, this has been a couple of days in progress. Um, right, so I've just finished compressing uh, this mattress here. I've got 140 psi on it. Um, I had a few jars. Why it take me so long? Uh, the previous one I had here was a straight. And it was, and it cracked straight through. So that set me back another day. I had to go into town and get a new fitting. And also the, the thread tape wasn't working, so I picked up some of this. And now there's no leaks, and it works fine. Um, I said previously I could only get it up to about 100 psi. Now that there's no leaks, 140, pretty easily. Thank you, Doc. So there we have it. We can compress biogas and use it. Oh, I reckon it's good when things go right, but if something doesn't work, that means you probably don't know enough about it, so a bit more research is needed. Um, I will add that, or reiterate, before compressing, you need to make sure there's no hydrogen sulfide in your gas, uh, and carbon dioxide, and certainly no air in your tank, um, so that needs to be removed. I remove it with the bleach and iron filings or the steel wool through the scrubbers so two scrubbers and an extra one because it's a wet gas you can use another scrubber like a, a tube or something uh, like a PVC, P, bit of PVC with caps um, and put kitty litter in there the, the clay pellet ones and that should capture some of the moisture in the gas because you don't want water in your tank either um, stay tuned we're going to use that bottle of gas on that, I'm going to give it a go and see how it works compared to the pump. Stay tuned.